Hey guys, it's that dividend guy coming at you with another dividend investing video. Hopefully, everybody had a great green day in the market. I hope everybody made some money. You know I always wish the best for my viewers and subscribers. So, today we're going to go over the overall portfolio, the individual um, holdings, then we're going to go through my watch list, and then my growth stocks. So, today we are down about uh, $290.00. For the week, we are up $129. The month, we're down $778. Three-month mark, we're down $1278. For the year, we're up $171.80. And you can obviously see when the virus hit, because look at that. We got down to 16, I think 1600 something. It says 17. But yeah, look at that. 17, yeah, 16.6. And we're now back up to 20. So staying in the market obviously is the right is the right call, guys. Um time in the market is better than timing the market because here's the thing we there's no way i would have known that was the top or, or that was the top right there's there's no way i could have known that there's no way i would have known that was a low so it's 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 important to to assess you know your portfolio and try to make sure that you're holding stocks that aren't going to be as exposed um maybe do some reevaluating on your portfolio but um yeah, that's just that's proof right there that time in the market is better than timing the market. And then all time, uh, since April 13th of 2018, we are up 486, up about 2.3%. This does not include dividends, but guys, look at that huge dip down th um, nearly 3k, which is insane and we've pretty much recovered all of it, right? Yeah, it's 17 it's, yeah, 16, 17, 18, 18, 20. So yeah, we've recovered all of that money that we lost which is great. Uh, as you guys can see, I do have a little bit of buying power. Uh, the reason for that is because when I bought PBCT, um, I bought 13 shares, and that's because there's a 5% um, difference between the price Robinhood asks for. Like when the markets close, they do like a fluctuation price, and there's usually leftover money from that. So I have $11.81, which actually is enough for another share of PBCT which I might buy later on. I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm kind of more of a fan after I make an initial purchase um, to leave the money in there and use it for next month. So I actually would prefer to leave that money in there and then let, let that add to the dividends that AT&T, AbbVie, Lowe's, and uh, People's United Financial uh, are going to pay me. Because $11.81 is going to get me further than... The ten dollar stock is just just my opinion, but let's take a look at the individual holdings here. Starting with Realty Income, one of my personal favorites. We have fifteen shares that will go up once I get back to work. Um, we have nine hundred twenty seven dollars of market value. Average cost is forty five thirty eight. Uh, four point four percent of the portfolio is in Realty Income. We are up to forty six thirty, up thirty six percent on this holding, and we uh, are being paid three fifty one from realty income so actually that $13 is going to be more like 15 when all the dividends this month are paid then we have Altria group they are the ones that paid me that monster $128 dividend I have 149 shares I have a hundred or excuse me five thousand eight hundred and eighty two dollars and fifty two cents is our market value 4361 is our average cost 28 percent of the portfolio is in uh, Altria, we're down 615.41, down 9.5%, but I'm okay with that. They are a dividend king, and uh, as you can see, uh, as you guys saw, they did pay me a monster dividend, so honestly, the dividend nearly covers uh, the amount I'm down, but I'm not super worried. It's just a buying opportunity for me to lower my cost basis in a very significant way. And I do want to explain, uh, I did have people ask me why I didn't put the money back into it, because... Uh, if I would have reinvested that, that could have been uh, three more shares of Re of Altria. And the reason that I didn't do that is because, so they paid me in October. So November, December, they don't pay me again until January. So I could reinvest the dividends into the stock and get three more shares. And those three shares would pay me um, a dollar sixty something, or sorry, uh, two dollars and forty cents in January but the thing is why get paid in January when I can get paid next month so that's why I put it into PBCT and I didn't reinvest it because the money actually works for me faster and more efficiently when I put it in a stock 
that pays me next month. And that is also why I did not put it into AT&T like I originally planned, because I didn't know that AT&T's ex-dividend date was on the 8th and Altria paid on the 9th, which means that I could have put the money into AT&T, but again, I wouldn't actually see that money until the next time it paid. So I'd have to wait an extra month because I wouldn't get it in fast enough for AT&T to pay me, and that's why I bought People's United Financial. Next, we have Coca-Cola. We have 20 shares, a little bit more than $1,000 of market value. Average cost is $51.26. 4.81% of the portfolio is in Coca-Cola, and we're down nineteen fifty, down about 2%, and they did pay me this month already. Next, we have FRT, and they are paying me on the 15th as well. So we'll have about, about $17 of free cash in the portfolio, in, in the, um, and the reserves ready for next month's uh, dividend payment. Uh, we have one share, seventy six ninety three is our market value. Average cost is one thirteen forty. A huge cost down average opportunity there, which I will try to take advantage of if I can. 0.37% of the portfolio is an FRT, and we are down 36.47, down 32%. I don't mind it being down because I only have one share, so anything I buy now um, really lowers my cost basis. And as you guys can see, uh, we're only $10 up from the 52-week low, but we're like $70 up from $70 of growth up from the high. So we have a huge upside potential for the stock. Next, we are we have lows. We're on to the second set of months. A dividend king here, two shares, $350 of market value. Average cost is $100.86. 1.67% of the portfolio is in lows. And we're up $147.88, up 73% on the on our original investment um, i love lowe's they did a great nine percent dividend increase this year and i'm really uh, excited about that considering that a lot of companies have cut their dividends uh, lowe's has been tried and true they've increased their dividend every single year that they've been publicly traded on the stock market and that's the reason why i chose them over home depot but i'm up on the stock but the problem is i'm up so far on this that I don't want to put any more money in. It's kind of like a target situation where the money was locked in and I had $1,500. I'm okay with letting $350 sit in there. That's not a huge significant portion of money for me in the portfolio. I generally, when I was working, I was putting about a grand in. So that's less than a month of investing for me. So I don't mind having that small of an amount of money locked in to that particular stock. But $1,500 in target was a bit much. That's why I reallocated into our next position being AT&T, which is a flipping steel at 2777 it's a bargain basement bargain because as you guys know i've said in other videos it was at 39 dollars, nearly 40 dollars at one point so it's a steal at 27 dollars. and i know there's been some drama with direct tv i will cover that relatively soon uh, I have 126 shares because i did sell out of my 15 shares of target and i re I repurposed that money, that $1,500, into at and nearly doubling my share count. We have about $3,500 of market value. Average cost is $29.68. So just like with FRT, a great cost on average opportunity here in at and And this is going to be a big position in my portfolio due to the 5G play and the reliability of their um, cellular service and people paying their cellular bills every single month. I like that stable income. I like that. That's kind of a forced, um, can't live without type of bill. Uh, I like investing in things that people really don't have a choice. They have to pay for it. So that's why I want a utility. That's why I want food stocks. That's why um, I'm so big into real estate because people pay their rent, people pay their utilities, and people pay their phone bills. Um, so that's why I'm so bullish on AT&T. Um, I'm down $240, but as you guys uh, saw, I'm okay with that. This is a great cost on average opportunity. I would love to be buying shares of the stock, but I can't currently. Um, but if I could, I definitely would be. This is my favorite stock this set of months, and I wish I could take advantage of the opportunity. But as you can see, I have a $65 dividend coming in from them. That is enough to buy two shares of this wonderful company. And the reason I'm excited about that is because I was only getting paid um, about $32 before. So I, like I said, I nearly doubled 
my share count. So I almost doubled my payout, and this will help me buy another share of Exxon Mobil next month. Next, we have PBCT, a dividend aristocrat as well. We are down, but I just I just initiated this position yesterday. Um, but we have 13 shares, 135.46 is our market value. Average cost is $10.80. 0.65% uh, of the portfolio is in uh, PBCT. Again, the newest position in the portfolio. Uh, we're down nine dollars and or excuse me, four dollars and ninety-four cents. Uh, but of course, today's return is our total return since we've um, only been in the stock for a day. I do have enough to buy another share, but I'm going to sit on that and I'm going to let that eleven dollars um, be added to the sixty-five that I'm going to get from from. Um, sorry, I'm going to let that add to the sixty-five dollars from AT and T and the seventy dollars from Avvi. They just haven't announced, as you can see. Um, AT&T pays on November 2nd, and AbbVie might even pay, might have already announced. Nope. So PBCT pays on like the 30th or 31st, so the very end of the month. That's why I chose them over AT&T, because if I bought shares of AT&T, like I said earlier, it wouldn't have added to my payment. So repositioning myself out of Target and adding it when I did made sense to put it into AT&T, because that money, that 1500 was added to my payout. But PBCT will be added because it's so late. In the month, so I'm still gonna see that extra like three dollars that I that um, PBC uh, PBCT will pay me. Next, we have Abvi, sixty shares, fifty two hundred dollars of market value. Average cost is seventy two twenty two twenty five point two four percent of the portfolio is in Abvi. I bought them during an acquisition, and I bought them at a very very good time. I'm I'm, I'm up nine hundred and fifty dollars, up twenty one point nine one percent on Abvi. They will pay me um, $70. I haven't announced the dividend yet since it's mid-October. Uh, they, I think, will pay in the middle of the month. PBCT will pay, sorry, AT&T pays at the beginning of the month. I know that Avi should pay around the middle of the month, and then uh, PBCT will pay like the last day of that month. So um, the goal is to use those dividends to buy another stock that's deep value, um, which could be J&J, but I won't be putting the money to Jan Johnson & Johnson. Um, J&J is one of those dividend kings that I wanted to initiate a position in, and I wanted to sit and wait until it was a really good price. We have two shares, about $300 of market value. Average cost is $135.79. 1.42% of the portfolio is in Johnson & Johnson. We're up $25.46, up 9.37% on J&J. Then we have 3M, another king, just like J&J. We have two shares, $333 of market value. Average cost is $147.28. 1.6% of the portfolio is in 3M. We are up $38.71, up 13% on 3M. Then we have the down the down dog for the portfolio, ExxonMobil. Um, we have 84 shares, 28 Hundred dollars of almost twenty nine hundred dollars of market value. Average cost is fifty three twenty. So a significant uh, twenty dollar cost on average opportunity here. And I bought the stock at fifty three. I have twenty dollars of upside in the stock prior to um prior to the pandemic hitting. But if you bought it right now, you would have forty dollars, nearly forty dollars of upside in the stock per share, which is insane. So I do plan on buying more. Um, as soon as I possibly can, as soon as it makes sense. Um, but I have 84 shares, uh, $2,800, $2,900 of equity, 53.20 is our average cost, 13, almost 14% of the portfolio is an Exxon Mobil, and I'm down $1,500, almost $1,600, down 35%. My goal with them is to lock in at $100, or excuse me, 100 shares, and I might start trading options i'm not quite sure i don't really want to get into that field but i might try it just to see but 100 shares would pay me 84 dollars a month which would lock in with other with the other dividends that i get paid would lock in two shares of altria every single month or two shares of coca-cola or even a share of frt so i'm keeping my options open um, but I want to have enough shares of companies to buy another company next month. So Exxon right now is the biggest payer in this set of months. I'm comfortable with that, but I do want to limit my exposure to oil. But the original reason why I got into the stock was simply because oil was so volatile and had a history of going up and down based upon the price 
um, per barrel. So I knew it was going to fluctuate, and that's exactly why I wanted to get into Exxon Mobil. So my theory panned out. Um, my reason for investing is definitely on um, display here, and I do want to add more. I just don't know how much more because I have other investments that I do want to boost in this set of months, one of them being Walgreens. Uh, we have six shares, and it's very close to Dividend King status a few years away. $217.00. On fifty cents is our market value. Average cost is a little bit below forty dollars. Portfolio diversity: we have one percent of the portfolio in Walgreens, and we're down twenty-two dollars, down nine point one eight percent. This is one of those holdings that I do want to boost up. Um, like I said, they are almost dividend king status, but um, it's just not as attractive. It's not as far down as Exxon Mobil is. The fifty-two week high is sixty-four fifty. Right now it's at 36 so we have at least 20 almost $30 of upside, but we have about almost $40 of upside in ExxonMobil. So Walgreens is almost as attractive. The reason I chose Exxon instead is because Exxon pays, um, I believe, double the dividend of Walgreens. So it makes more sense if they're around the same value, actually, Exxon's cheaper. It makes more sense to put money into Exxon Mobil if you feel bullish on the future of oil versus Walgreens because you get paid almost twice as much as Walgreens pays you when it comes to the dividend. Next, we have Aflac. We have one share, which is great, just like FRT, a good cost on average opportunity here uh, if the price falls below my average cost. Uh, we have $37.57 of market value. Average cost is $35.75. 0 0.18% of the portfolio is in AFLAC. And we are up $1.82, up 5.09% in AFLAC. That will finish out the portfolio. If I had to pick buys for each month, of course, it would be FRT, AT&T, and ExxonMobil. That's where my money would go if I was limited to the portfolio when it comes to buying stocks. Because those are the deepest value opportunities and the best place to put my money to get um, more upside on the dividend because the lower the stock price goes, as long as they um, keep the dividend, you get the same dividend for less money and your, your cost basis goes down, which means the lower the price, the, the higher potential upside for capital gains but also the more dividends you get paid. So that way it's like a win-win. Like the lower the price goes, the higher the dividend. And that way you lock in a higher dividend yield, but you also lock in massive profits with the stocks that are down um, closer to their 52-week highs. Now let's take a look at the watch list, starting with my personal bank, U.S. Bank. Uh, they pay a decent dividend. I believe it's 41 cents a share. Um, so to be dividend efficient is about four grand, so it's not terrible, and I do bank with them. Um, but the upside is really what I'm focused on here. It's nearly twenty dollars of upside, or sorry, it is. It's at forty. So yeah, at sixty, there's twenty dollars of upside, more than twenty dollars upside. So this is one of those that's a, a decent. It's a pretty deep value, but you also get a, a decent dividend. The only hesitation that I have is the Fed caps the dividend increases. Um, for the major banks, and that might affect U.S. banks' um, ability to boost the dividend like it has in recent years. But again, if I'm dividend deficient, um, increasing the dividend increasing isn't a huge deal for me, um, but I do want to own my personal bank, especially with that great upside, op that upside potential already caked into the stock. Next, we have PepsiCo at 143, not uh, interested at these prices. Kimberly Clark at 154. Again, I'm not interested at these prices. Colgate at 80. I wouldn't buy it here. Starbucks at 90. Not quite low enough for me yet. Only four dollars off its high. Procter and Gamble at 144. It's a dollar off its high. I'm not touching it. SX Property Group is one of those that I can. I should have been buying for like the past since I started. It seems like. Um, it seems like it's always down. Uh, but. At 209, uh, we have 120, almost 120 dollars of upside per share, plus a dividend over a dollar and dividend aristocrat status. So this checks off literally all of my investing um, principles. It's got a, a a really deep value plus a really good stock and dividend growth. So it's it's a, the perfect uh, play for me right now. If I had cash, if I had extra cash, if I was uh, back at my job, it honestly would be kind of tough to decide whether or not 
I would want to buy AT&T or SX Property Trust because my goal is to make about 10, 10 to 15% of the portfolio um, real estate. So this would check literally off every single box that it possibly could because it's a deep value. It's a great dividend. It has the growth. And it does fill that real estate need that I have in my portfolio. Then we have Black Hills. This is the utility play for the portfolio. They are, um, I believe they're two or three years away from Dividend King status, but I don't think they are allowed to have it because they're not in the S&P. But they're still very close to 50 years of consecutive dividend growth, which is my like peak. You know, that's that's what I, what I really want in a stock. I want to hold the ones that have increased the dividends and will pay me more every single year. And they have the cash flow to do that. So at $50 flat, uh, there is about $29 of upside in the stock per share. Plus, they do pay a nice dividend. I have a great dividend growth history, and I look for a P.E. ratio around 15. Uh, that's like a value stock, um, you know, in the range of a value stock. So it's not overvalued here. Um, and it does pay a nice dividend with a great dividend growth history. Then we have Mickey D's at 227 I did have a comment about uh, somebody did ask me, why do you always go by the 52-week highs? You do realize that stocks can break those and stocks can go below those. I 100% agree. The reason I do that is because it's just it's just easier for me to kind of say whether or not I buy it versus calculating it out every time because then the videos would be way too long. Um, but at 227, I'm not touching it. As you can see, it's a dollar off its highs. And in, in response to that as well, yes, stocks can break their highs, but good investors understand that there are quality businesses. When they're quality businesses, they rarely go on sale. So a lot of these stocks, like Procter & Gamble, Colgate, Starbucks, a lot of them don't really go down. And when they do, you have to be ready with cash on the sidelines. So honestly, as an investor, I'm making a mistake. I don't have a lot of cash on the sidelines. A lot of that is due to my situation. I know I don't know if you guys, um, if you're a newer viewer, I actually got in a uh, car accident. And so I've been out of work for a few months. So I haven't had that cash to deploy. But one of my rules is going to be having about 500 to $1,000 in the portfolio. So when I see deals outside of my regular um, deposit, I can take advantage of them. So quality stocks rarely go on sale, guys. So I'm okay to sit on the sidelines and focus on the companies that are deep discounts. That's why they're in the portfolio. That's why I added them because they have that upside. I lock in that dividend. And if I only focused on the top quality stocks that I want to own or that I, I, I am a fan of, if I didn't find alternative investments that I like just as much, I wouldn't be, I'd have been invested in nothing. So um, I've picked my companies based on how based on the quality of the company and how much cash flow that they bring in and I want to own everything on my watch list the reality is most of the stocks that I'm looking at because they're such high quality companies they don't go on sale very often but there are some that I focused on because they go on deep discount that's why so I'm waiting for the opportunities to get into other stocks like Procter and Gamble like I, I did pull the trigger on J&J and 3M. Uh, and I will eventually on McDonald's too, but I'm going to wait until I get it at a price that I, I've calculated that I think has enough safety and upward potential to make me money with, again, like I said, with the dividend and with the upside potential. Next, we have public storage at 235 At 246 not enough upside for me in the stock, but it is, again, just like I said with McDonald's and SX property, I do want a decent portion of the portfolio to be real estate. And so this is one of those that I might make the exception. I might buy it when it's down a little bit, initiate a position that I could replicate, as in if I put $1,000 of, of money in the market each month, I might buy three or four shares because I could replicate that with a grand. And that way I would get that real estate exposure and I could always cost down average. So my rule is when I initiate a position, I only initiate one that I can replicate. That's why you see FRT has one share. That's why you see um, Lowe's has two shares or Affleck has one share because I want to initiate a position, get an average cost set like a baseline and then only buy below that. So that's my rule. Uh, next, we have Apple, which uh, is down big. They, they, did, a, <laughs> they did a reveal uh, today. Uh, but they're down at 121. I would definitely buy it. It has uh, about $16 of upside in the stock. 
or, or yeah, about sixteen dollars of upside in the stock. And I just want to own Apple, guys. I'm a fan. I love the company. I love their revenue streams. I love their product line. I love their CEO. There's just two. I love their cash they have on hand. There's just so many things to love about this company, and I'm such a fan of its history and its past and its innovation that uh, I think it's a no-brainer for my portfolio. In fact, it, it it is in my top five stocks of all time. Not dividend stocks, but as like a pure fan, it is in my, as a fanboy, it's in my top five. So I definitely want to own some Apple, and it will be a pretty considerable portion of the portfolio, uh, but I'm waiting until I have enough cash and enough dividends per month to buy it uh, every single month, which means that 36912 needs to gain, nine, so 100, 110, 120, 130. So I need 40 more dollars a month uh, in order to buy this stock every single month, which honestly, uh, as kind of like a, a gift to myself, I might start doing that. Instead of uh, instead of buying uh, other dividend companies, I might buy Apple because it, it's literally like my favorite stock. And again, this is one of them as well, Disney. I love Disney stock. And it's 52 week highs, 153. So at, say, $130, we have about uh, 20, $22, $23 of upside in the stock. I feel the same way about Disney as I do about Apple. I'm a fan of the company. I love the revenue streams. Um, I love the dedication people have to this brand, to this company. I love, <laughs> I, I love everything about Disney, honestly. It is going to be one of those, it's like a guilty pleasure stock, just like Apple. I know it doesn't pay a dividend right now, and I did own, um, I think it was two or three shares, but um, Apple and Disney are going to be the growth portion of my portfolio, and I do really want to own Disney because I love the business, just like I do Apple. So guys, that will finish out the video for today. I know it was a little bit of a longer one. I did answer a couple questions as I was going through. I'm going to know it was a little bit of a longer explanation today. Sorry, I'm just excited. Um, I was so pumped to buy uh, PBCT with dividend money. I just love that the dividends from companies. So like interest on my money is making me more money every month. Like I think that's insane. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button. We just hit 440 subscribers yesterday, which is phenomenal. I love seeing that growth. I'm so appreciative of that. Um, and I will keep the videos coming. I'll make sure I have an update every single day this week. Um, I feel so much better since the injection, so I'm so pumped to be back. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button on my channel, That Dividend Guy. When you do, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any updates. Um, I do portfolio updates Monday through Friday, and I try to throw in a couple videos if I can. I've kind of lacked on that, but I want to get back into it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another Robinhood portfolio update. Take care, guys.